Item number, SCP-055. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. Object is kept within a 5 meter by 5 meter by 2.5 meter square room, constructed of cement, 50 centimeter thickness, with a Faraday cage surrounding the cement walls. Access is via a heavy containment door, measuring 2 by 2.5 meters, constructed on bearings to ensure door closes and locks automatically, unless held open deliberately. Security guards are not to be posted outside SCP-055's room. It is further advised that all personnel maintaining or studying other SCP objects in the vicinity try to maintain a distance of at least 50 meters from the geometric center of the room, as long as this is reasonably practical. Description SCP-055 is a self-keeping secret, or anti-meme. Information about SCP-055's physical appearance, as well as its nature, behavior, and origins, is self-classifying. To clarify, how Site-19 originally acquired SCP-055 is unknown. When SCP-055 was obtained, and by whom, is unknown. SCP-055's physical appearance is unknown. It is not indescribable or invisible. Individuals are perfectly capable of entering SCP-055's container and observing it, taking mental or written notes, making sketches, taking photographs, and even making audio-video recordings. An extensive log of such observations is on file. However, Information about SCP-055's physical appearance leaks out of a human mind soon after such an observation. Individuals tasked with describing SCP-055 afterwards find their minds wandering and lose interest in the task. Individuals tasked with sketching a copy of a photograph of SCP-055 are unable to remember what the photograph looks like, as are researchers overseeing these tests. Security personnel who have observed SCP-055 via closed-circuit television cameras emerge after a full shift exhausted and effectively amnesiac about the events of the previous hours. Who authorized the construction of SCP-055's containment room? Why it was constructed in this way? Or what the purpose of the described containment procedures may be are all unknown. Despite SCP-055's container being easily accessible, all personnel at Site-19 claim no knowledge of SCP-055's existence when challenged. All of these facts are periodically rediscovered, usually by chance readers of this file, causing a great deal of alarm. This state of concern lasts minutes at most, before the matter is simply forgotten about. A great deal of scientific data has been recorded from SCP-055, but cannot be studied. At least one attempt has been made to destroy SCP-055, or possibly move it from containment at Site-19 to another site, meeting failure for reasons unknown. SCP-055 may present a major physical threat, and indeed may have killed many hundreds of personnel, and we would not know it. Certainly it presents a gigantic mimetic mental threat, hence its Keter classification. Document 055-1 An Analysis of SCP-055 the author puts forward the hypothesis that SCP-055 was never formally acquired by and is in fact an autonomous or remotely controlled agent, inserted at Site-19 by an unidentified third party, for one or all of the following purposes. To silently observe or interfere with activities at Site-19. To silently observe or interfere with activities at other SCP locations. To silently observe or interfere with activities of humanity, worldwide to silently observe or interfere with other SCP objects, to silently observe or interfere with No action to counter any of these potential threats is suggested, or indeed theoretically possible. Addendum A Hey, if this thing really is an anti-meme, why doesn't the fact that it's an anti-meme get wiped? We must be wrong about that somehow. Wait a minute, what if we were to keep notes about what it isn't? Would we remember those? Bartholomew Hughes, NSA. Document 055-2. Report of Dr. John Marichek. Survey team number 19-055-127-BXE was successfully able to enter SCP-055's container and ascertain the appearance and, to some degree, the nature of the object. Notes were taken according to the project methodology, 
after which the container was sealed again. Excerpt from a transcript of personnel debriefing follows. Dr. Hughes. Okay, I'm going to need to ask you some questions about number 55 now. Interviewee. Number what? Dr. Hughes. SCP Object 55, the object you just examined. Interviewee. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think we have a 55. Dr. Hughes. Okay then. I'd like you to tell me what you've been doing for the past two hours. Interviewee. What? I... Subject appears uncomfortable. I don't know. Dr. Hughes. Okay then. Do you remember that we all agreed that it wasn't spherical? Interviewee. That what wasn't? Oh, right. It isn't round at all. Object 55 isn't round. Dr. Hughes. So you remember it now. Interviewee. Well, no. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I know there is one. It's something you can't remember, and it's not a sphere. Dr. Hughes. Wait a minute. What's not a sphere? Interviewee. Object 55. Dr. Hughes. Object what? Interviewee. Doc, do you remember agreeing that something wasn't shaped like a sphere? Dr. Hughes. Oh, right. It appears to be possible to remember what SCP-055 is not, negations of fact, and to repeatedly deduce its existence from these memories. Personnel involved in Survey 19-055-127BXE reported moderate levels of disorientation and psychological trauma associated with cycles of repeated memory and forgetfulness of SCP-055. However, no long-term behavioral or health problems were observed and psych assessments of survey personnel showed consistent reports of this distress fading over time. Recommendations It may be worthwhile to post at least one staff member capable of remembering the existence of SCP-055 to each critical site. Item Number SCP-268 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-268 is currently to be maintained within Data Expunged, as it has been deemed that the change of use for the facilitation of escape by restricted personnel or humanoid SCP is too great. However, the possibility of use by field agents after further testing is under review. Note: Special containment procedures have been modified. See Addendum 268-05 for detailed information. Description SCP-268 is a tweed wool newsboy cap. The design and make seem to be of Irish origin. Due to the style and fabric, it is estimated to have been created in the late 1800s to early 1900s, though fiber analysis is inconclusive. The only markings on the cap are a small label with writing in Middle Irish, reading, The Garden is the Serpent's Place. However, there are various indications that this label was sewn onto the cap in recent times. Due to the nature of the artifact, testing has been extremely difficult. SCP-268 seems to be a normal hat until it is worn. Anyone wearing the hat, however, suddenly and instantly becomes unnoticeable. Subjects become unmemorable, thoroughly ignorable, or taken for granted by all observers. Observers, with specific prompting, are able to later recall physically seeing the subject, but can give no specific details other than seeing a man with a hat. Observers seem to have the overwhelming feeling that the wearer is someone that was supposed to be there, and thus did not merit thought or notice. During initial testing, remote analysts completely forgot what they were supposed to be observing within the chamber and it was not until the D-Class subject wearing SCP-268 spoke out loud that he was noticed again. Removal of the artifact, vocalization, and physical interaction with observers seem to be the only way in which wearers of SCP-268 can make themselves noticeable. Once an observer has been made to notice an SCP-268 wearing individual, they slowly begin to ignore the subject once more, unless kept actively engaged by the wearer. Testing reveals that if a subject wears SCP-268 upward of 20 cumulative hours, its effects seem to linger, with diminished potency, on the subject even while not wearing the artifact. Testing in this area has been cautious due to the possibility of containment breaches, 
but one incident has shown that if the artifact is worn long enough, that the effect is rendered permanent and unbreakable. Extensive research is still unable to determine whether or not electronics are directly affected by SCP-268. Observers viewing an SCP-268 wearing subject through electronic means still have difficulty acknowledging the subject's existence, and even when noticed, observers report to be unable to see the face of the individual in question. Observers note pictures of SCP-268 wearing individuals as being blurry, and digital media such as surveillance cameras is reported to become grainy and unfocused. Research is unsure whether these alterations are extant and physical, or merely perceived due to SCP-268's properties. It should be noted that although capturing SCP-268 through visual electronic means has been difficult, motion sensing, weight sensing, heat seeking, and similar devices all trigger correctly when encountering an SCP-268 wearing subject. Addendum 268-01 SCP-268 is noted to have some similarities to SCP-180. SCP-268, however, does not seem to function on inanimate objects, and more importantly, does not directly steal the identity of its host. While SCP-180 causes its host to become unrecognizable after SCP-180 itself is removed and placed on another object, this seems to be a side effect of its function of identity theft and transfer. Meanwhile, SCP-268 could be said to steal the identity of longtime wearers as they become irrevocably forgotten. This has caused some speculation as to whether the items share similar origins, or whether the many similarities they share are merely coincidental. Addendum 268-02 At Agent Brown's request, and after approval by Dr. and Dr. Klein, SCP-268 is being used with agents in active field duty. Results thus far have been favorable. Addendum 268-03 Field testing has been suspended. Though Agent appears to have been on payroll and on records, no personnel, either on site or in higher command, remember knowing or hearing about an Agent Further tests should be conducted only on D-Class personnel and on no single individual for longer than 10 hours. Addendum 268-04 SCP-268's effects seem to strengthen and become permanent as individual subjects wear the artifact for extended periods of cumulative time. There is a marked difference in the potency of SCP-268's effect on someone wearing it for the first time and someone who has worn the artifact upwards of five hours on other occasions. For example, someone who has not worn the cat before seems to dispel its effects merely by speaking. Those who have worn the artifact on several occasions for extended amounts of time seem to be able to ask observers questions and receive answers, with the observer having little to no recollection of the event. In one test, a subject who had worn the artifact for upwards of 15 hours was able to ask standing personnel the test chamber's password, nearly causing a containment breach and the escape of D-Class personnel. The security personnel in question reported being unable to recall parting with the information in question. Dr. Klein Addendum 268-05 As of SCP-268 is missing. Its absence was discovered early in the morning by Agent and research analysts, and in its place was a note reading, Thanks, I needed my hat back. L.S. A full investigation of this security breach has been launched. Item Number SCP-402 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-402 is kept in a climate-controlled storage locker at Site-41. All known SCP-402-A and all water affected by it, currently around 612,000 liters are kept in a climate-controlled freezer at Site-41, with each sample wrapped in barricade tape to prevent accidents. SCP-402 and SCP-402-A must be kept away from all water, including water vapor, outside of testing. Substantial quantities of SCP-402-A may exist outside of containment. All unusual drowning or suffocation deaths must be investigated for possible SCP-402 involvement. 
Mobile Task Force Tau-4, Water Water Everywhere, is tasked with performing all testing, investigations, and retrieval missions associated with SCP-402. SCP-4021 is kept in a Type 2 humanoid containment cell at Site-59. Description SCP-402 is an irregularly shaped solid weighing 4 kilograms. While SCP-402 is composed largely of obsidian, trace amounts of platinum and iridium are present. SCP-402's structure has numerous abnormal microscopic gaps, similar to those found in SCP-148. This, along with SCP-402's anomalous density, 22.2 grams per centimeter cubed, roughly 8.5 times that of obsidian, suggests that the two materials operate under similar principles. Any water that comes in contact with SCP-402, hereby SCP-402-A, develops antimimetic properties, effectively rendering it imperceptible by any direct means. Witnesses typically interpret this as SCP-402 absorbing the water. SCP-402-A can be detected through its interaction with other materials, which occurs normally. For example, the dissolution of salt in SCP-402-A presents as the disappearance of the salt. Scales and thermometers that detect SCP-402-A's weight and temperature respectively can be read normally. Items that float in water will appear to levitate when placed in SCP-402-A. Water rendered imperceptible by SCP-402 can transfer its effects to other water. For every unit of SCP-402-A that is introduced to a body of water, an adjacent 11,000 units, plus or minus 500, are similarly affected. This is perceived as the rapid, spontaneous disappearance of the affected water. SCP-402-A does not present any risk of a chain reaction. However, due to natural currents, SCP-402 itself can create large amounts of antimimetic water very quickly when submerged, particularly in moving water. Consumption of SCP-402-A presents a serious choking hazard, as its presence in the trachea does not trigger the laryngospasm responsible for sealing the airway. SCP-402-A's presence in the lungs is only detectable via the resultant oxygen deprivation and is typically mistaken for other medical conditions, which prevents proper treatment. Safe handling of SCP-402-A can only be performed by trained personnel. SCP-4021 is a human, roughly 35 years of age, that was in possession of SCP-402 at time of recovery in Indonesia as well as a plastic jug containing 4 liters of SCP-402-A. SCP-4021 has refused to cooperate or communicate with Foundation personnel and has not been identified. Prior to containment, SCP-4021 would consume SCP-402-A to the exclusion of all other liquids. This was accomplished safely via a tube inserted into the esophagus resulting in the illusion that it did not possess any body fluids and giving it a desiccated appearance. This was initially mistaken for a property of SCP-4021 itself, with the true nature of its condition and the anomalous nature of SCP-402 only being identified after careful observation. SCP-4021's appearance returned to normal as SCP-4028A was flushed from its system. SCP-4021's blood when composed of SCP-4028A, possesses cognitohazardous effects when consumed in any quantity. Subjects will become convinced that any water they encounter is an extension of an effectively infinite subterranean body of water, in which they risk being trapped should they come into contact with the water. This results in severe aquaphobia, as well as a fear of drowning that persists even in situations where no water is present. Testing the anomalous properties of SCP-4021's blood has been deemed cost-ineffective. As such, information on its effects have largely been garnered from SCP-4021's pre-containment activities. Note: Several subjects who had previously consumed SCP-4021's blood displayed a strong fear response when exposed to SCP-109 and SCP-812 though none were able to justify their reactions. 
Further testing is under consideration. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.